naked up contributions he had made. Your love seeing it, your love obsessing over it, and we all definitely love judging developers based on their GitHub contributions heat map. Oh my God, she has three thousand comments in the past year. She must be an amazing developer. No doubt that this graph highly correlates with the consistency and the persistence of the developer. But it can also be highly misleading if that's the only thing that you look at assessing a developer. Now in this video, I'll be taking you through the basics of Git and GitHub, and I'll also be showing you a very cool manipulation trick using Git that you can use to actually hack the GitHub graphs, the the GitHub contribution graphs. I'll also be attaching a timestamp for when I start with this manipulation trick. If you already know the basics of Git, you can feel free to skip to that section directly. Now starting with Git. Git is a version control system that helps you in keep track of all the file changes happening in your code base. Now this is very useful when you're working in a team or if you're building your next big project and you want to keep track of all the product changes, the different versions and in general keep track of the versions of your product. It's very useful in that case. So it's very easy to manage your code and keep history of your code base using Git. Now, Git can be easily installed for any operating system by simply visiting the Git website and then going to the download section and following the instructions or the binaries for your specific OS. Now, another thing that people do in the beginning is that they use GUI, they rely on GUI clients heavily, that is graphical user interfaces very heavily, such as GitHub Desktop. Now, I would recommend you to stay away from them and actually get comfortable with using git in your cli because that will just help in increasing the speed of your workflow a lot in the beginning it it might feel that using a gui is easier and a lot faster than using the cli but once you get the hang of actually using the cli trust me your speed will be insane with git well right, once you have git set up in your system you can go ahead and initialize your first repository if we're simply making the repository and let's cd into sample git and after this the command to initialize git inside your repository is by simply running the command git in it and that's it you have initialized an empty git repository inside your project and all the configurations are stored inside this dot git file that is what uses that, that is what git uses to actually maintain the versions then you can go ahead with your project as usual. You can make, you can make sample files, for example, indexed or JS or whatever it is that you're doing. You know, whenever you feel like you want to create a snapshot of the features that you've developed, and you feel like this is a good enough point for me to commit my changes, that is, save my changes into the version control system. All you have to do is you have to type in the command git add, and provide the file name or the directory in which it is stored. So I'll simply be providing git add dot which will add all the files inside my current directory that is a sample git directory which does include my index.js file so that's what i'm doing over here and now if you look at the status of the current git rep repository that we have by typing in git status you'll realize that i have a few changes to be committed so the snapshot that i was talking about has not been created as of now the changes have just been put on a staging area where you'll need to first commit the changes and then that committed change is what will act as the snapshot of this current feature. So to add it, what we need to do is we need to write git commit m and also provide an appropriate git commit message. Now writing appropriate git commit messages is an art in itself and does require a lot of practice. but you should be very careful when you're writing git commit messages because that is uh, co commit messages because commit messages are very useful whenever you're trying to debug a problem that is by backtracking or whenever someone else is trying to view your code or your pull request it becomes very helpful to them to actually just simply look at your commit and understand what feature you had developed in this commit so now simply just because i had just initialized my project i'll be going ahead with the init commit that is a convention that is used for the initialization of a project so that's what i've done over here another thing that you should avoid when actually writing commit messages is that you should not write commit messages such as minor fix or 
commit one, commit two, commit three, because these commit messages don't actually provide any context to the feature or the bug that you're trying to solve inside this inside this commit. So make sure that your commit messages are actually useful and very informative for anyone viewing your commit history. Now, if we look at our commit history, we'll see that our commit is currently this this hash and the head is pointing to that commit. So we have the first commit at the head of our main branch. Right now it's named master, but conventionally all master branches are nowadays being named to main because of whatever reason. So let's not get into that. Um, now, as we commit, the head will move to that specific commit. So think of head as pointing to the place where you are currently inside the Git repository. Now let's talk about the concept of branches in Git and why they're needed. Because more often than not, what we'll be doing when we are developing a huge project is that features would not be built linearly by you or your teammates, or probably you'll want to have a stable branch or a stable position of your product. And while simultaneously developing other features, which are not stable currently in a separate place. Now, how can you do that? So, well, Git allows us to do that by actually checking out to a new branch, which is done by Git checkout dash b which the dash b is what helps in creating the new branch and checking out to it and let's name it feature prism because we are creating an awesome prism sure why not so currently if you look at our head our head is currently pointing to the feature prism branch so what git checkout does is that it checks you out of whatever branch you are to the branch that you want to and in this case, because we provided the dash B argument as well, we have created a new branch called feature prism as well. So now after developing on this branch, for example, you create a new file called app.js, which is, which contains an, some application logic. You can go ahead and add it to your staging area, and then you can go ahead and commit it. Now, remember I was talking about important git commit messages over here, we will simply start with like for example consider that you have made considerable progress in the app.js and actually developed the prism so over here you can write feed develop prism interactivity now after a few more commits and making sure that our prism feature is actually stable we'll want to eventually merge this into our main or master branch in this case because that is where our main code base is at and that is what we want to show to other people and to our team that we have developed this and now this finally can be a part of our code base. So to do that, first we'll have to check out to the main branch. And then what we'll do is we'll want to merge this current branch, the feature prism branch into the main branch, which will bring in that feature into our master branch. So over here, if you look at the current directory, you'll see that only we only have the index.js file. But after I type in the command git merge and provide in the name of the branch that I want to merge, you can simply merge in feature prism into master. And now if you look at the file that I have, I'll have two files, app.js and index.js. So app.js was brought in from the feature prism branch and now it has been merged into the master branch in this case. Now merging in this case was very easy because we didn't have any merge conflicts and solving merge conflicts is a topic and a video in itself. So let's not get too much into that, but you can of course always go ahead and read up a blog or watch another video on that. Now remember that we wanted to actually collaborate with our other friends or our other teammates. How can we actually do that? Because currently this Git repository is only present on our system locally. So how can we share this repository with them? Well, of course, we can simply copy this repository, paste it on our mail, and simply send them a mail. Shut the up. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Of course, that's not of course that's not what we are going to do. We'll be eventually pushing our code onto GitHub. Uh, which is a place for us to host these Git repositories and collaborate with other people. Now, Git also has a lot of other features such as CI, CD and a lot of other features which you can read on later, but that's not the point of this video. So for 
us right now github is a place mainly where we can host our git repositories and collaborate with other teammates on it so yeah that was all about git and github um now let's see how we can actually manipulate the github graph and make it dance to our tunes let's look at what a github heat map actually looks like and what's the significance of it so on a github heat map a single block represents a single day of the year and the block becomes a deeper color of green the more commits you have in a single day so in, so it's a pretty good uh, correlation between the developer and the efforts that he's putting in i mean sort of because if you know a few tricks inside git then you can very easily manipulate this heat map and just do whatever you want with it now nobody actually does this because it's very easy for a person to verify whether the number of commits is legit or not so no one actually does this but let's see how we can do it just for fun and yeah so we'll start by making a node script let's let's name it hacking github graph and yeah i'll open this in my editor right now great so the only thing that i need for this is a very basic index.js file which i'll simply use to run commands inside my terminal now for this project we'll be using something known as child processes which i have talked about previously in my terminal inside a browser video child processes basically allow us to spawn sub processes inside node.js which is a single threaded language that's what child processes basically let us do we'll be using the exec command from the child processes which allow us to run commands inside the terminal directly from our node.js script or well, it was to start with inside our index.js script what we'll be doing is that we'll be using the exec sync exec sync and the fs now the exec sync is coming from the child process which i've used previously in my terminal inside a browser video the exec sync function allows us to run commands inside our terminal using node.js and child processes are basically used for spawning sub processes inside node.js because as we know uh, node.js is a single threaded language and of course fs is used for accessing the file system inside node.js so now uh, we'll be starting with the number of commits now i want to have more than like 3000 commits in a single year and the start date will be 2018 of 1st of jan till 2018 31st of december so that is the day that i've chosen and uh this is the function random date is a function that i'm using to actually get a random date between these two dates so that's what i'm getting over here that's very simple it's a very simple function i'm getting the start date and i'm adding a random number of days to it that's all i'm doing now the meat of the code actually lies inside this for loop where we'll be going over this for over 3000 times because that's the number of commits that i want what i'm basically doing is that i'm generating a random date and formatting it into the date that git uh, requires which is this format and then i'm simply making a fake commit inside a temp file that i've created that, that that the fs will create for me and i'm simply adding it to the staging area now while committing this is where the magic happens now while committing what i'm doing is that i'm adding in the author date and the committed date which manipulates git into believing that the commit was made way before then it was then it actually was and that's simply how it is done and now in the end i'm simply removing the temporary file that i had created and committing that change as well so technically i should have 3001 changes all right let's get started so i'll just run this node index.js um but it failed do you know why it failed yeah because i haven't initialized my git repository yet so first i'll need to initialize using git init and only then can i run my git node js node index or js command all right i'll see you after 3000 commits all right so so far uh all right so we have generated 3000 fake commits inside our project let's see let's check them out git log and yeah as you can see i have created like 
3000 random comments at different times um of course they are a bit haphazard and it could be made a lot better but there's like a very low effort way to do this so let's see how this actually reflects on my github contributions graph it actually doesn't do you know why it is because i haven't actually pushed my repository to github yet so how can i actually do that remember we were talking about pushing repositories to github and that will help us in collaborating with other folks so that's what we'll be doing right now so i'll go i'll be going ahead and creating a new repository graphs and the name of the project doesn't actually need to be same as your folder name it's just that it's just better for me to remember my project that way and now once a project has been created what we'll be doing is we'll first be adding a remote origin that is the location where we want to host our repository now once that has been added we can simply go ahead and push it upstream to the origin now this has 3001 commits and if i go and see my repositories or uh, sorry my profile and travel back to 2018 when i didn't even have a github profile and damn i have 3000 commits randomly inside my 2018 in 2018 but when i didn't even have a github account back then that's the power of actually manipulating your git commits and just creating a beautiful looking graph and not only that you can also create some really beautiful patterns if you get creative and find out the exact dates at which you want to commit now because this was done for purely entertainment purposes um i'll be getting rid of this repository because i don't want this shameful repository being a part of my github uh so i'll just go ahead and delete it and yeah now my conscience is much clearer i don't have any contributions in 2018 so i'm glad of that now no please remember that this was made purely for your education and entertainment um please don't try to use this to manipulate your github graph to impress interviewers or your friends um it'll only harm your pr profile and not do you any good yeah and that's all for this video remember you're white